In this video, we will continue to focus on one of the major risk factors of cardiovascular disease, which is high blood pressure. It is also a feature of the metabolic syndrome, and therefore we will explain it a bit more detailed to you. According to the World Health Organization, more than four out of five cardiovascular disease deaths are due to heart attacks and strokes, and one-third of these deaths occur prematurely in people under 70 years of age. This is very tightly connected to high blood pressure. Worldwide, about 1.2 billion people are suffering from high blood pressure. It is a risk factor that we have often mentioned throughout the course. But Ariane, why is it so dangerous? Yeah, most people with high blood pressure have no symptoms, even if blood pressure readings reach dangerously high levels. It is therefore also known as the silent killer. You can have high blood pressure for years without any symptoms. Sometimes people with high blood pressure may have headaches, shortness of breath, or nosebleeds. However, those symptoms are non-specific. They usually don't occur until high blood pressure reaches a severe or life-threatening stage. But let's start from the beginning. Blood pressure is the force of your blood pushing against the walls of your blood vessels. It is always measured with two values, the diastolic and the systolic blood pressure. Let's have a look at our heart and the circulation to understand it better. There are two phases to your heart's pumping cycle. Systole, this is when your heart contracts, pushing the blood out of the chambers. Then there is the diastole. This is the period between contractions when the muscle of your heart relaxes and the chambers fill in with blood. The diastolic blood pressure is therefore the pressure that is always present in our blood vessels. Diastole, systole, I always confuse those two. Is there a way to remember them better? Yeah, I remember these two values by thinking that systole sounds a bit like pistol. It is the one where the heart pushes out the blood like a pistol. You can imagine that this causes a lot of pressure. Therefore, it is also the higher value. Doctors measure blood pressure with a stethoscope after a temporary blood flow restriction. They can distinguish both pressure values because they sound differently once the doctor opens the vessel again. Your blood pressure changes throughout the day based on your activities. Having blood pressure consistently higher than a systolic reading of 130 millimeters of mercury and a diastolic of 80 or above may result in the diagnosis of high blood pressure, also called hypertension. This can damage the inner lining of the blood vessels and cause a lot of troubles, as you have heard before. Apart from being a major risk for heart attacks and strokes, it can also cause heart failure, a condition where the heart cannot pump properly anymore. But how does high blood pressure develop? That is a very good question, Ali. Aging is a natural risk factor for increasing blood pressure because blood vessels lose their elasticity. This is an important mechanism in how our blood vessels react to spikes in pressure. The lumen gets wider and once the pressure goes down, also the blood vessels go back to its normal state. However, once this adaptation is lost, the pressure in the vessel increases. Other risk factors for high blood pressure are smoking and stress but also our genes can influence the development of high blood pressure. Whew, this time I'm not the reason for problems. That's good. Unfortunately, you are wrong in this regard. Diabetes is often connected to high blood pressure. The mechanisms behind that are not yet completely understood, but we know that high blood glucose levels can cause damage of the inner lining of the vessels and more stiffness. Chronic hyperglycemia and insulin resistance play an important role in the initiation of vascular complications of diabetes. 
This involves a number of mechanisms, including the increased formation of advanced glycation end products. These are the same that we discussed before. Also, oxidative stress and inflammation can be initiated by diabetes and that damages the vessels and thereby increases blood pressure. And how about me? Now we have heard so much about sugar and fats that I believe the time has come that we define my role in the metabolic syndrome. Yes, you have heard before that high salt consumption is quite a problem in our Western society. We consume far too much of it. The sodium concentration in the body always has to stay within certain limits. One theory is that because of the high salt content in the blood, more water has to be pushed onto the vessels to dilute it. Therefore, the volume increases and then pushes to the walls and increases the pressure. There have been big cohort studies that indeed show that the reduction in salt intake decreases blood pressure. Thus, it is recommended to eat as little salt as possible. Lastly, we want to shortly discuss how blood pressure is being managed. According to the World Health Organization, only one out of five people suffering from hypertension has it under control. The interventions often start with well-known lifestyle adaptations, such as healthy diet, enough physical activity, non-smoking, and very little alcohol consumption. However, patients with hypertension often need medication to get their values under control. One class of these medications are known as diuretics, which means that they help to excrete more water through the kidneys and thereby reduce the blood volume, which then lowers the pressure on the blood vessels and the strain on the heart. Summing up, in this video we talked about high blood pressure, the silent killer. We introduced you to diastolic and systolic blood pressure and gave you some insights why salt and sugar levels in the bloodstream matter and also how blood pressure can be managed. Last but not least, we want to leave you with a quote that might help you keeping up with a healthy lifestyle. If you don't spend something on your health every day, one day you will have to sacrifice a lot of time for the disease.